You know, I, I really can't tell you why the sky is gray today. But I can tell you we have another epic podcast on the way. Industry 45 podcast show, Giant TV, GiantFM.com, Country89.com, MusicLifeMagazine.net. Is it better to have Asking the eternal question, is it better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all? My friends, the May Sides, give them some love on Facebook. Good friends of mine here in Southern Ontario. Uh, all right, so today's podcast. So Walker's K is an island in the Bahamas. If you Google this, I didn't, I didn't just make this up. This is real. And a really cool place, beautiful island, lots of boats. Seems like some really cool people hang around Walker's K. I was hit by a tornado at some time. Uh, but the band Walker's K is not from the Bahamas. They are from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. If you're from Toronto, you say Toronto, though. And uh, I caught up with Gary Labar. And really cool band. I think you're going to enjoy this podcast because we talk a lot about the music business. Talk about record labels. Talk about management companies. Talk about writing songs. They've got a couple of new songs out right now. You can check them out. Walker's K. That's C-A-Y dot C-A. Walker's K dot C-A. New single out called Tell Me. Uh, that song, by the way, reached number one on the iTunes and Google Play charts in South Africa. And when you're number one in South Africa, baby, you're big. All right, let's get it started. Industry 45 podcast show for Giant TV. Shane Christopher Neal is my name. Check it out with my friend, Mr. Gary Labar. Hey guys, it's Garrett Goodwin here, drummer for Carrie Underwood. Um, thanks for listening to the Industry 45 show. All right, Industry 45 podcast show. Just a reminder, you can check out the Industry 45 podcast show, Giant TV Niagara on YouTube, giantfm.com, country89.com, and now at musiclifemagazine.net. Uh, thanks to my friend, Joel Nappin. So I got to say this, I, I've been to the Bahamas. I've never been to Walker's K. But I did watch a YouTube video on it today, and from the band, not the island, Walker's Clay, uh, uh, Rocker, Walker's K, Gary Labar. <laughs> That's a lot to say. Well, uh, hey, Shane, thanks for having us on the show. We appreciate it very much. Uh, so let's talk about, first, the name of this band, and I understand it did come from the island itself. Um, pretty cool place by the looks of it. So when did you head down there, and when did you kind of fall in love with this island enough to name your band after it? Well, back in around, I think it was 1997, um, I'm a pilot, so I flew... Uh, a bunch of friends uh, and myself down there just for a little vacation. And at that time it wasn't destroyed uh, by a hurricane and it was a gorgeous Island. I was there for about seven days. I, I had a lot of inspiration. I was writing a lot of music and I said to myself, you know, if I ever start another band again, another project, I think that would be an awesome name to call the band. So hence Walker's K was born. And you said you were a pilot. So how did you come across Walker's Kate? Is it someplace that you were just, you were looking to go? You just kind of stumbled across it or? Well, actually, I think I saw an ad originally in one of the pilot magazines that I subscribed to. And they said it was an island paradise for, for you know, small aircraft pilots. And I kind of did some research, looked into it, called the actual uh, number uh, and I got some information and I said, you know what? I want to go there. And that's basically what I did. So this reminds me, uh, you're a singer in the band. You're a pilot. Um, you're a lot like Bruce Dickinson, just so you know. <laughs> Maybe yeah. You're... Yeah. And you know, I was my, my first actual interest in love and career in my life. I was a firefighter paramedic. Nice. So, yeah, because I, you know, I hate to admit it, but I'm in my 60s, so I've had a lot of life experience. 
Nothing wrong with life experiences. You write great songs with life experiences, and we're going to get to some of those. So tell me about the band, first of all. Uh, yourself and Mike Swain, correct, uh, are the, the one-two punch in this band. So talk to me about when you guys kind of got together, because this project's been going on for some time now. Yeah, um, I'm Mike Swain and myself. Um, I, uh, in the band, of course, I, I am a lead vocalist, rhythm guitars and keyboards. And Mike is actually rhythm and lead guitars, and he handles a lot of the technical stuff. He is the recording genius and technical guy when we have any issues. But I met Mike, um, I own a radio station, and he was on a uh, radio show um, of several years ago, actually. And he came on as a guest on that particular show, and I happened to be in the studio in the control room, and I was listening to him, and I was quite intrigued with his experience about stuff. So afterwards, I talked to him, and I said, hey, you know, I'm looking to get a new project together. Would you be interested? And, of course, he said yes, and then uh, the rest is history. So you guys have been doing this for about a decade, I guess, now. And and so why, you know, you, you said you're in your 60s. Obviously, you're very passionate about songwriting and about music, right? So what was your kind of goal when you started it, and maybe where is your goal now, let's say, 10 years into it? Well, you know, as I say, with Mike, I, I was a, I've been friends 10 years, and we've done some different projects here and there, but the actual Band Walkers K has only been together about two years. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was 10 years. You, the, your relationship is 10 years. The band is two. Got it. Yeah, I met Mike 10 years ago, but the band is actually two years. And, you know, I, I figured I've had some success in the 80s and 90s with other bands touring around and you know, work with some fantastic um, producers that have produced Metallica and Santana and Doobie Brothers. And they all said, hey, man, you, you kind of got a little bit of a gift the way you write. You write kind of commercial pop rock, and that's an asset in the industry. So I kind of told Mike, I said, look, man, we're getting up there in years. Let's try it one more time. Let's write some songs, put a band together, and see where it goes from there. Just uh, see if we can make a, a difference in the world and maybe do a little touring and, and that type of thing. So that's where it's headed. Okay. I'm going to ask you about uh, this particular song. Um, you could probably hear it. And, and I got this, uh, it's called just look and I got it off YouTube. That's what's playing on right now. And sadly, sadly it was uh, at the Oshawa music hall, which is now no longer. Can't believe that. Uh, but what a great song this is. I, well, I'm, thank you. That, that's actually off a live video, what you're hearing. Um, yeah, and it's so sad about the Oshawa Music Hall, but, you know, due to COVID-19, that's that's what we're expecting to a lot of venues. It's very unfortunate that, you know, they just can't pay their bills and they're going to end up closing. This sound of this video and just this song, I, I'm, I'm very 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 impressed with it because when i turned it on i was doing something else and i just kept going back to watch it because i'm like what a great song great melody you got a great voice i love the acoustic guitar um when you write you write with an acoustic guitar is that how you write most of your songs and you kind of put it together as a band or yeah sometimes i come up with a lyric line or a melody line and then i try to match everything but i use my acoustic guitar or a piano to write 90 percent of the songs but we have a unique sound. And by the way, um, thank you very much for your, your compliments on that song. We feel that two songs that we just released, Why Oh Why and Tell Me, is a better representation of the band. It's a little bit heavier, a little bit more mainstream. And we're getting so much more um, positive comments on the newer music. But anyways, um, the bottom line is we incorporate acoustic and electric through 90% of our songs live. And we like that flow because you get that good crunch, heavy guitar with the electric and you get a very nice, mellow, melodic sound, chorusy sound with the acoustic. And it blends very nice, actually. Yeah, I thought so. Like I said, it really uh, captured me when I was uh, doing something today. And I was like, I really like the, the melody in this song. So the, tell me about Tell Me. <laughs> yeah. So, so great song as well. Um, where, where did that originate? Well, it was, uh, I was talking to some people um, that I know, and they were going through some bad relationships and things, and they basically said, you know, hey, you know, I'm going out with this girl, it was a, a guy friend of mine, and he says, uh, things are getting kind of cold with her, and she's telling me everything's okay, 
but I know it's not true. So I wrote a song called Tell Me and uh, basically tells that a girl wants to get out of this relationship, but she's not telling the guy the truth. And then at the end, she finally does. And the guy's devastated. See, he knew all along. Men know best. I keep saying that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But here, I'm going to this here. Yeah, definitely more rock and roll in your face guitars. Yeah, for sure. But uh, yeah, I really, I really like this song. And if I'm not mistaken here, I, and I do have this in front of me here, reached number one on the iTunes and Google Play charts in South Africa. So congratulations on that. That's pretty awesome. Thank you. So what is Thank the, you very much. What, what is your plan with this? Obviously, I, I'm sure you were you know, wanting to play in 2020, and I don't think anybody's going to be playing in 2020, but uh, you guys want to go out and, and go on a small Canadian tour. You're from Toronto, correct? So what's kind That's of your right. game plan here, uh, I guess, post-COVID-19? Well, of course, we do. Like yourself as a musician, we, we do want to get out there and play in the, in the public domain live. Um, so we're just have, we have to wait and see where the industry is going with the venues and promoters and agents and things like that because uh, the way I'm seeing it, as you know, Shane, things are opening up slowly. However, there's going to be a lot of restrictions on venues just because of the close proximity of people in on those venues, um, being in the venue. So. You know, we're just waiting it out, and it's terrible because we can't. We haven't even rehearsed. We can't do anything really. So. Um, we're just going to wait and see what happens, but we want to be out there. Do you have a, a backup plan, um, i.e., I don't know, continue to write more music or doing live shows via Facebook or Instagram? But i got to be honest with you, I'm kind of tired of them, really, and I get it, and I understand why and where the artist is coming from. But have, have you thought of a backup plan, or at this point, is it just kind of a wait and see? You got some cool songs. You want to play them, obviously, and you're going to wait to see when and how you can do that. Well, yeah, the backup plan, We, you know what? We agree 1 million percent with you about the Facebook thing. And, you know, it's not enough. I know everyone's trying to get their product out there, and they're trying to promote themselves and this and that. But as you know, as a musician, it's not the same thing, sitting you know, in front of a camera and then putting it up on Facebook. It's, it's just not happening for us. So we're not doing any of that. However, we are continuing to write. And the bottom line is when we start meeting again, which we hope shortly, we need support videos for the two new songs, Why Oh Why and Tell Me. And that's going to be the next step is professional videos um, for those particular songs. We do have fantastic lyric videos out for those songs, but we want to actually make uh, our music video as well. Let me ask you why you think, uh, and by the way, I agree with you, but why you think video is so important today, because I'm 51. You are, you said you're in your sixties. I grew up through obviously, you know, much music here in Canada too. I'm down in Niagara and you know, it was a big part of my life growing up. It's how I got new music. You know, I'd come home and, and watch these videos and that's what would turn me on. And I'd go and buy the albums and, and, and then it kind of went away for a while. And now it's, there's, there's a surge back to this idea of doing good videos and, and maybe speak to the importance of that as an artist. Well, you know, visual, uh, the visual genre is everything nowadays because because of social media, you know, where we've been for the last four or five, six years, everybody has to watch something. It's not enough for them just to tune in and listen with some air, but they got to see something. So of course, video supports the lyric line in case you don't really understand the lyric line, but exciting for a consumer. Music. If you can watch something, they can use it. And then of course, looking at the video as well, that's why videos are very important. They support the lyric of the band and what you're trying to say visually. So I think it's a, it's a good thing. Well, I, all I know is in the eighties when I was watching rat and white snake videos, I was watching them for the girls, but I guess that was a whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> it's always about the chicks, man. <laughs> so let me ask you this. You're an independent band. Is, yeah, but we're on a label, but it's an independent label, yes. Okay, so maybe, because this is a, an industry show, explain a little bit about that, and what what does that mean to somebody? You're on, a, you're on a label, but it's an independent label. I mean, you know, I get it's not a major label, but what do they do, I guess, 
for you in the band uh, because things obviously in, in that game have changed uh, considerably. So maybe speak to that a little bit. Well, first of all, there's only approximately six, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, major labels left in the world. And, and, and the biggest one is Universal Sony. Um, but most of your labels now are independent labels. And, you know, the problem with an independent label, the biggest thing is money and tour support. Uh, when you were on a major label, they, they can throw all kinds of advances towards you in tour support and promotion. But they're multi-million dollar entities. But a independent label is also trying to distribute your music, trying to uh, promote you, trying to um, get, get, you know garner an interest in you to play and, and tour. But you know the problem with that is, of course, it all comes down to monetary issues. You know, uh, most independent labels are not multi-million dollar conglomerates, so that's the downfall. But at least if you're signed to a label and they're actually working for you, they will help promote your band and get you to the next level. You also have a management company um, working for you. Can you explain a yeah. little bit about that and maybe the benefit that uh, to an artist to have a management or a management company? Well, management company is fantastic because they kind of semi keep track of what you're doing, uh, reminders, calendar events. Um, but they, they do promotions. They, um, book interviews like, like our interview right now with you, Shane. Um, and they, they kind of, you know, give you suggestions of what they think you should do to move into the right direction. So, you know, a band can't do it all themselves. You know, they, a band should concentrate on being creative writing good music, putting a live show together if and when you play live again. But all the business aspect of the music industry, it's always good to have some type of uh, managerial support. And that's why we do it, of course. And if you answered that 30 years ago, you would have said, because I drink too much and I need someone to yeah. uh, look over my life. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. You know? <laughs> Things have changed. Absolutely. I know they've changed for me too. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, you know what? This has been awesome. And like, I, I'm a big fan of, of all, you know, everything you're doing here. Tell me is a great song. And like I said to you, when I caught on to that video this morning, I was really captivated just, I think by the melody and just the whole thing for just look. So that's a great song as well. So even though it might be a little different than you're doing now, uh, I, I still think it's really cool. So everything you're doing is really cool. And I appreciate your time. Well, Shane, we can't thank you enough. It's, it's, it's gentlemen like yourself who are helping bands, you know, hopefully to the next level and promoting us. And if we didn't have, uh, you know, gents like yourself, you know, we'd be dead in the water. So, you know, we want to thank you. And is it possible I can give a plug out to our website? Absolutely. Well, if anyone is interested, um, our website, uh, you can go to Walker's K and K is spelled with a C. It's C-A-Y, Walker's K dot C-A. And everything is there, our links, contact information, video, media, everything is there. And we would appreciate uh, you taking a look at it. Thanks for listening to the Industry 45 Podcast Show. Check out all podcasts at gianttv.ca, giantfm.com, country89.com, and Giant TV Niagara on YouTube.